The urge doesn't feel just like just to climb a tree just for the fuck of it. Cottonwoods are always some of the most attractive trees to me. It had steps in it. I figured, what the hell? It looks like pretty good bark. Uh, on a platform I put here like 15 years ago. I was like, holy shit, the platform is still there. I tried to build a tree fort down here, but it got torn down. I don't know if the park rangers came and decided. It was against Covenants or what, but this is probably 25 feet off the ground or so. Probably another 20 feet if I keep climbing. And, oh, I think I will. It's a shame I don't have four arms. Hold and climb a phone at the same time. Dude. Phone slash camera slash internet. One of the necessities that uh, our culture doesn't seem to be able to go without. Let's see. And there are no steps. But I built another platform right there 15 years ago. I don't know why that one would be missing. And this one would still be here. But uh, I also put in another two over there, that side of the tree, but you can't see them from here. So the platform's not there. And I don't think it'd be too good of an idea to try to climb up there. Unless I had two free hands instead of holding a phone. good place to, I used to come up here with weed, just smoke a bomber, sit here for hours and hours. I wish the seat had a total recording time on the amount of hours my ass has been planted on it, and then a divider bar for how many of those hours were sober, I'm sober now, and how many I spent either Blitzed, fucking baked off of weed or tripping acid. Uh, although I've spent many more hours sitting here stoned than I have tripping. Uh, but longer periods of time, in the short, um, few amount of times I have tripping. But on a cloudy day, uh, ah, clouds and wind. the odds would be of me actually getting struck by lightning if I brought a 10 foot pole up here in the middle of a rainstorm and held it up like an antenna. I've seen lightning strike trees. I've seen lightning struck trees a good number of times in my life, but I've never actually seen the lightning strike the tree. Tell you the truth, I haven't ever seen lightning strike anything. I 
sure as hell have seen it a whole bunch of times. But it always looks like it hits the ground somewhere out of sight. Or comes up out of the ground somewhere out of sight, I mean. They smell fucking bacon. Cops only look two different ways. Either bald or have short, short haircuts. I don't think I've ever seen a cop that has anything but a bald fucking head and a short haircut. Like Mr. Clean fucking bald. I could be wrong though. I guess everybody's a critic. Everybody has their own judgment. The severity of my own judgment makes me question others in the song by the Butthole Surfers. You never know just how you look through other people's eyes. And that's a part of dialogue that made me think about that sense. Uh, it's like, like my brother, you know. I thought I knew him really well for... 19 years, but he shot himself with a shotgun, and I would have never, the person I knew, the person I thought I knew, uh, wouldn't have ever done that, because to me, I mean, it appeared that his life was fine, you know, he had, he had a job, he was living in a house with some mates, with some friends, saw a lot of people, didn't have a whole lot of, I didn't really see he must have hit a lot, but hit a lot of his anguish. But he did that, and I was shocked. I was like, I thought somebody murdered him and covered it up, because maybe somebody else knew that a shotgun is the perfect murder weapon, as long as there's no witnesses. And you don't talk to anybody, you know. You can get away with murder with a shotgun. There's no way to... That is with like, you know, that they don't use shells, they use like, you know, buckshot usually. You just... But anyway, kind of wish I could, uh, uh, kind of just, he took a lot of things to the grave with him, a lot of the answers to questions that I just have, in the name of curiosity mainly, but also because he's the most cared about person that, uh, that I had up until that moment. And I don't even know how I got on the subject of uh, not really knowing how people... Oh yeah, okay, I don't remember now. Not that it matters. But, uh, I was thinking maybe if lightning actually starts striking here, if this cloudy ass day ever starts striking bolts and climb higher. But, uh, couldn't go climbing with a pole. Need somebody else to, need to bring some rope down here, lay it on the ground, and then have someone, like, throw me a rope tied to it and pull it up there. So I've always wondered, how is that to get struck by lightning? Seems like that would be a part of life not never to f be forgotten. Of course, a lot of things, the most unforgettable things in life are the things that are most traumatizing and fucked up. And in, in some sense, the, those are the most, like, full of, like, lively times in life are the most memorable times, which of course are always the most fucked up. Even though that's not too smart of an idea, it would be an awesome thing to have under my belt before I went to the grave. I wouldn't want to die from it, but I want to survive it with about an inch of my life. 
and then have a memory and a story to have. <laughs> of course, if I were really to do it, I wouldn't do it up in a tree. Because that's a long fall. Of course, I might get away with it, too, if those bushes were another, like, three feet tall. They'd be maybe padding enough. I got struck by lightning, fell 50 feet out of the tree, and only broke my back. <laughs> I'd be able to deal with going through life with a broken back. I don't know if I could handle having a broken back. Probably just even if I were just a paraplegic, if I were a quadriplegic, anybody who knew me well would do me a favor, just like wheel me off a cliff. I don't think I could. I don't think anyone could. I mean. A quadriplegic, how is that to go through life being a fucking... That must just... That's gotta be terrible. And from something usually so sudden and unexpected. Things like that seem to make life a complete and total joke. The randomness of how fucked up things can happen to anybody at any given point in time for no reason whatsoever other than bad luck. Just... Bad luck. I feel like I could be caught in an endless dream, though. I once drew a picture of a fractal. I was trying to draw what my idea of what a world could be. Uh, pretty much be... It's a big fractal, and then there's a little, little tubes coming out of each... Each big thing that spirals down, and then little, little pieces coming off of it, going in all these directions, each piece is a dream and the fractal represents the amount of time like I think the program Acid Pro computer sound programs have really etched their way into my uh, vision on how time goes by at a steady steady rate a steady measurable rate like watching seconds tick by on a clock and time ticks by this this piece coming off branching off this main fractal at, at this speed in this dimension, but in the in the fractal, in the dream, uh, time time goes by like this. It, you know, a, a more vertical. That's why in dreams, so much more time can occur in such a short amount of time in this world. And when you wake up, uh, you know, sometimes you've had dreams that last a week. And in this world, it's you know, it's only been an hour. But you have all this memory that is quickly forgotten of this dream that you have, like, all this stuff that happened in one night. In that dream, there would be other little, there'd be more little uh, fractals just like the one it is coming off it. And I, I can recall in real life having dreams within dreams. Um, probably even had dreams within dreams within dreams. And, and uh, that, that memory, that memory of having dreams within dreams is uh, part of the reason that this, uh, that caused me to think this. Uh, I kind of wish I had the picture here with me, but it's easy to explain, so it's not really 100% necessary. But um, in those dreams, there are uh, an endless number, just like in this world, uh, I've probably... If I had a dream every night for at least once a night, some some nights I've had like up to like ten dreams, I think, and those are just the ones that I can remember. 
Um, and since dreams are a place uh, in a dimension somewhere that everybody has to go that nobody really understands, uh, I think that there's a good chance that that's what this is. Um, and it always seems so real and in the moment during it. But uh, I think when, you know, whatever causes you to wake up, death or something in the outside world, like being too hot or something biting you or anything, uh, when you snap out of it, your mind just, I think your mind, since there's a good chance if this is what's really going on, if this is what reality really is, is an endless dream, your mind for your own damn good, uh, forgets, it forgets the past, um, so that you don't bumble through your waking life, uh, remembering everything, going, oh, I've already done everything there is to do an endless number of times. And there's nothing new, nothing exciting, uh, and everything would just be a horribly depressing uh, passing. So, for your own damn good, and this is, this is my take on a, what's high in probability uh, setting to the matrix, to the endless dream world, is that the only way that uh, it can be believable for such an endlessly long period of time is that uh, all through history, all through eternity, you forget, you just never remember the past. Um, there are very few, you know, actually I can remember a lot from dreams, bits and pieces, but I always wake up in the morning and I'm always rem able to remember a fuckload of stuff for like five to ten minutes and then it's gone. And then once I realize it's gone, I'm like, wow, I just forgot a ton of shit. I might, you know, my mind must do that. On, there, it must have a good reason. Because I, I tend to have a pretty extensive memory on on this dimension. Uh, I don't think I would just willingly forget, like, like a fuckload of stuff. Willingly. That's what I think about deja vu. Uh, every once in a while, you soon it starts. You start to get this wave. I like to call it the mil the million years feeling because whenever it happens, it always feels like it feels like this is how I see deja vu. It feels like time just froze for almost an infinitely long period of time, freeze, and then everything in eternity everywhere froze. And then as soon as as soon as time starts ticking forward again, you snap out of it since there's no, since your brain was frozen too for like you know at that point if everything and everywhere was frozen there'd be nothing to make of it except for when you snap out of it it's like really really weird it seems like a million years went by but uh, that's that's kind of what I think deja vu is a frozen a frozen wrinkle in time where everything just stopped everywhere in the universe and just at some point in time just decided to start taking again and uh, since nothing came out of it except for a weird feeling afterwards there's there's no uh, there's no evaluating it and uh, that's another thing that I think actually occurs in our world, in this dimension, to which the case beyond from which I could even decide to be able to explain or fathom is far stranger than anyone can imagine. <laughs>